are you going, Rachel? Good. How are you, Melody? Hi. Shona? <laughs> Looking great over there, Shona. <laughs> Hey, so apparently in Mary Claire, they released this little snippet comparing childcare in Australia to other countries. some of the statistics? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Sweden are paying less than 200 a month on childcare, whereas in some places in Sydney they're paying, paying close to 200 a day. Uh, Japan, 24-hour healthcare centres, and that's mainly for the single mums who might do night shift or single dads or whatever. Um, in France, nannies are tax deductible. In Hong Kong, they've got childcare centres that have relaxation areas and sensory rooms. And I think, I think we have some here in Australia too. Germany, all children have the right to a free daycare place and you can sue the government if there's no place available. Wow. Because here in Australia, there's like a two-year waiting list. Is that in right? Some places, in some places. And I'd say that's more Sydney or cities. Yeah. Exactly. And this is what I'm saying. That the, the, yes, interesting statistics doesn't show the full picture. Yeah. Do you think the government should be doing more for Australian mothers or fathers? It depends Take on where... Them. There's only the limited part, right? So parents obviously want the government to be doing more for childcare. Childcare? A disabled person is going to be wanting the government to do more about yeah. disability. Yeah. Someone, someone. Small with... business owners want you to be doing more. Yeah. Yeah. And what what that video? I didn't really agree with that video because what okay. the video didn't actually show was the amount of tax that these other places. Yes. Pay. So Germany free right. childcare. Yes. But it has a lower tax free threshold than Australia, and Germans pay more tax. Mm -hmm. Right. So Sweden cost of childcare childcare is a uh, is less, right? But they don't. Ha they virtually do not have a tax free threshold. Mm. and they pay 30% tax. Yeah. But I, I guess in terms of looking after parents who are working and then have to take time off to go look after your child, do you think the government supports that in Australia? Because I don't. I actually think that the government should be looking at taking one step further, not just childcare. We should be encouraging parents to want to stay home and look after their children, not even want, but know that there's security. So what, what kind of encouragement are you talking about? Encouraging as in verbal encouragement? No, I think there's a push, there's such a push to have children and put your child in childcare and re return back to the workforce. Mm -hmm. I think the push should be have children, bond with your child, mm -hmm. raise your child. And I think through, perhaps the government should be looking at implementing policies to workforces or organisations whereby mothers or fathers returning, uh, having time off to have their child, know that they can go back to their work in five years when their kid is off school age. That way, they, they're secure. I guess if they're home with their kids, we don't need as much childcare. Yeah, yes. and that, that releases <laughs> yeah. the relief on the tax. And it also makes jobs more available for... Other people. Those coming back into the workforce or young young. You workers. know you've got a job for five years yep. while this mother or father is on maternity or paternity yep. leave. That's my solution. So yes. instead of two years, you're just wanting it to be five years. Well, I think because it's once your kid is in school, there's more hours of the day that mm. they'll be at school. Yeah, but... but I guess le leading the, pri the the problem is we're not bond we're not encouraged to bond with our children. We're encouraged to get them back into the system, get I, Mrs. or Mr. back into the workforce. I actually, like, well, I just had the baby, right? Yeah. And I didn't really feel that I was encouraged to stay home or to get back into the workforce in whatever way. I was, we're given two years maternity leave that we can, well one year and another year if we can choose to take it. Correct? Did you think that was enough? I'm back at work after nine months. Mm. That's not because, because of your I was own forced. circumstances? Yeah, not yeah, because you were forced. But because we needed the money. So even if the government gave us five years, I'll still be back in nine months. Mm. Well, I think every circumstance is different. I myself mm. am a stay-at-home mum. I don't receive anything from the government. Mm. But the security of knowing that I have a full-time job to go back to mm. when my ch child is of age, of five years, because I want to be there for them, these are my personal choices. This is a choice that I have. And I think that the government... I'm not asking for money. I'm saying... 
give us security to know that we will be back in the workforce, we will provide back to the economy and just, you but know... But can't you work that out with the the person you're employed with? Well, I don't think that's encouraged, though. Women give up their jobs. They, you know, right. or, or they're encouraged redundancies. Yeah, I was going to say, are employers positions? actually encouraging Pushing. this or supporting this, or are yeah. they just doing it because the government says they have to? Well, that's why I'm thinking, I, I think, take it further than just childcare. Take it to encouraging mm -hmm. parents to bond with their child, spending that crucial time with their child. That, the first five if, years. If, if, if you can. Everyone's circumstance different. Everyone's mm -hmm. circumstance Well, the government is looking, that our new government at the moment is looking to introduce some new reforms and they said it's the biggest reforms they've had in about 40 years. And one of them is they want to give those hard-working lower-income families 85% subsidy, which would taper down to the 20% for the goes, higher income family. Where are they going to get the money payer. from? Back to the taxpayer. Back to the taxpayer. We've happily... only got 50% of the economy paying tax at the moment anyway. We, we can't afford it. And I think childcare to the Australian economy is about $10 billion, probably rising because everyone... You know, I would happily the... pay more tax if I thought I would get some more genuine family-based benefits from it. I would. would someone... <laughs> Was that enough to shock you? <laughs> but, then, but then the thing is, yes, you would, but then, you know, what if someone who doesn't have a family, they would have to pay more tax if they're not getting the benefits? Well, that's why I go back to personal choice. Mm -hmm. You have the choice to have your child and then you have, you know the choice whether you're going to put them in childcare and go back to work or you're going to stay home and look after that child and make the sacrifice that some parents do to live off the one income. Mm -hmm. You know, not all of us are freeloading, no. as people say, well, on the government as a state. We all go home. through different stages where we're relying on the government for support for something. Yes, yeah. there's a portion in your life yes. where you don't want to pay those extra taxes, but you end up using it later anyway. Maybe. Maybe. If you have family, if you get older, disability, yeah. all sorts of things. We're here to support each other. Yeah. Stop the judging. There's so much judgment. Whether you put your child in childcare or you're a stay-at-home mum, there's so much mm. judging, mm. you know. Yeah. But anyway, look, what do you think? Do you, would you have an issue with the government looking, you know, to improve childcare here in Australia and even New Zealand? Drop a line, Facebook, Insta or check us out on YouTube. <laughs>